everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman, The Dark Knight, issue number two. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, let's real quickly recap my feelings of issue number one. Issue number one, I really didn't care for at all. It was a mediocre issue at best, and I believe I gave it a two out of five stars. And the thing is, is we have three other Batman titles with Bruce Wayne starring in them. Detective, Batman, and Batman Robin. And each of them serve their own purposes. But what purpose does Batman the Dark Knight serve? What exactly does this comic bring to the table that the other comics don't? It makes me keep on wondering when I was reading the first issue, and even afterwards, exactly what comics could we have had in place of this comic. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not want any comic to fail at all. Every comic that I read, I want to succeed. In addition to that, I'm always for more stories with Bruce Wayne as Batman. But constantly, I have to keep on thinking, what comics could we have got instead of just another Batman title? So, the question is this. Will this title turn around and become better? Will it succeed? Will it actually show that it has something to present to its readers that makes it different from every other Batman comic? Or will it be a comic that will sadly get cancelled within the next coming months? Well, that's a question that we're going to get towards the end of this review. So without any further ado, let's get into Batman The Dark Knight issue number two. Now, where we last left off on issue number one, Batman was running to Arkham Asylum because it was a big prison riot, and at the very end of it, Two-Face was there, incredibly jacked up, looking like he was on Venom. Don't worry, it's not Venom, but it looked like he was on Venom. And we start off with Two-Face beating the shit out of Batman. And I mean beating the shit. Batman had no chance against Two-Face. If it wasn't for a lucky one or two things, Batman probably would have got killed. But eventually Two-Face does stop his rampage and Batman finds out, as do the rest of the Batman family, that there are constantly different members of the Batman Rogue Gallery becoming incredibly jacked and on steroids and losing their mind, ranging from the ventriloquist to the cavalier, if you even remember who that guy is. A lot of people don't. Uh, we have, like, the Clock King, and then we go over to some other random villains. So a lot of different villains in the Batman universe are getting all jacked up, HDH, looking like they're Hulk Hogan from the 80s, or even worse, like a jacked up, humongous Hulk Hogan, Bane, hybrid, love child. I wonder what it would look like if Hulk Hogan had sex with Bane and one of them got pregnant. Actually, I'd rather not think about that. Anyways, Batman needs to figure out exactly who's giving this serum out to his villains and why. And while this is going down, there is a mysterious woman hopping around in a bunny costume. And interestingly enough, if you look at her eyes, they're purple. So will Batman figure out who this woman is that's dressed up as a rabbit? Will he be able to stop all the chemicals that are being handled out? Or will he have the biggest ride on hand to date in Gotham? Will he just keep on falling down the rabbit hole? Well, you're just going to have to read and see. Let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Um... It was nice to see the rest of the Batman family in here. When I mean the rest of the Batman family, we see Robin, we see Nightwing, we see Batgirl, we see the Birds of Prey, we see Batwoman. We see a good chunk of the Bat family. I think with the exception of Catwoman and Red Hood, uh, everyone's there. Uh, there's some actually witty dialogue going on between Alfred and Batman. And it was actually enjoyable to read the two of them just having conversations about random stuff. The action was okay, and the art was surprisingly better in this issue than it was in the last one. Which is interesting because it's the same artist. But it doesn't feel like everyone's going like this the whole time. No, I mean, there were a few instances where the art was odd, but for the most part, it was actually pretty good art. The story becomes more and more interesting, and we get to see more of Batman's villains show up, especially with this surprise ending that I'm sure a lot of you guys would like. And the girl that's dressed up like a bunny rabbit, it's silly, but I'm intrigued. Who is this woman? And, you know, the one thing that kept on having me kind of think about her is she has purple eyes. Unless it's contacts, 
She has purple eyes. People don't have purple eyes. So and we have the mystery there. Uh, bad. Well, the dialogue, although between Bruce and Alfred was good, really wasn't really that good anywhere else. Especially with Two-Face. It was a little silly. A little silly. Um, so the dialogue could have been better in other places. The Jim Gordon dialogue was pretty good, but that's about it. Um, so the dialogue still needs to be worked on. Um, although we had a few good action scenes in the early going, I felt as though everything else was kind of trimmed real quick. For example, we don't get to see too much of Nightwing or Batgirl or Robin fight too much. And then when Batman goes to investigate something that's happening on a train, it feels as though there's no fight scenes at all there. There's no action. Every crook gets taken down real quickly and there's no way for us to really enjoy it. Um... Bad. Uh, whether or not you should get it. Um, on a whole, this was actually better than issue number one. And this, on a whole, was fun to read. Is it the best comic out there? Oh, no way, shape, or form. Um, I give this an upgrade from a 2 out of 5 stars to 3 out of 5 stars. The biggest problem with this comic is... Despite how enjoyable it may be, or how much of a fun factor it may have, it still doesn't bring anything new to the table when it comes down to Batman. Um, do I recommend picking it up? Only for the most diehard Batman fans. If you're not a hardcore, diehard Batman fan like myself, then I recommend avoiding it. But for someone that loves Batman just as much as I, you won't be disappointed. You'll actually be intrigued. But like I said, it's a 3 out of 5 stars, and I feel as though that's a safe place to put it. It wasn't overwhelmingly good, but it wasn't crap like the first issue. So, hey, at least we're improving. So with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now.